So now we come and actually go through the astronomy and physics use cases, uh, some, all of which are pretty large data. So the first one comes from a Caltech astronomer who is part of a collaboration which runs the Catalina Real-Time Transient Survey. And um, this is uh, basically looking at the large region of the sky in the action, in this case in the visible light regime, um, or wavelength, um, to look for things that are changing. And then to go and find those things that are changing and looking at them in more detail. So this finds supernovas, variable stars, black hole type activities, then the fact that the jets that those produce, stars that actually have an unusually large amount of motion. And the information comes from three telescopes, two in Arizona and one in Australia, and they're adding one in the near future in Chile. So on a clear night, it generates a tenth of a terabyte of data, and it has about 100 terabytes so far. They're pre-processed at the telescope and transferred to Arizona and Caltech for further analysis, distribution, and archiving. This data is de deliberately processed in real time, so the transient events are published electronically through a variety of mechanisms uh, without any, um, I mean, there's no withholding period. Sometimes in science, you allow the person who took the data some special time where they look at the data only. This is not um, true here. Here, the data is made available immediately because it's not necessarily so that the actual people running the survey are the right people to exploit a particular transient event. So then the later data analysis classifies the transients, um, does the additional observation using other telescopes, interprets it scientifically, and publishes its reports. It uses archival data to compare the observations with. It's a wide variety of geographically distributed sources from the so-called virtual observatory framework. Astronomy was one of the very first um, fields to set up a so-called virtual organization attached to them, and that virtual observatory is highly successful. It has machine learning in the classification, streaming data, pleasingly parallel type processing of the individual um, events, and then parallelism both over images and then later parallelism over events. And uh, these events are identified in telescope images. Um, this is a current, this is not a future project, it's a current project. However, it's a precursor of a very famous project, the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope, LSST, which is meant to operate in the um, early 2020s as a very high priority um, instrument. They astronomy and has a um, sort of process to decide what the field wants to do. In LST, you will uh, take that 0.1 terabyte and make it about 30 terabytes per night. This uh, slide here shows the actual classification um, process. You have the input data coming along from the uh, left. And it pops into here. It compares with existing data, either from the, from the survey itself or other resources. Uh, that becomes, classifies it into events. Then you have these machine learning and uh, expert system type um, ways of identifying the type of event. Gives you probabilities for um, what the event is. And then you go and do follow-up scientific work, follow-up data analysis, take new, two new images, point of specialized uh, instrument at it, and so on. So, so this uh, slide here. Basically says in words uh, what I already told you orally about the previous picture. It tells you how that uh, architecture is the cyber infrastructure for a general approach to time domain astronomy. And how um, the various things such as the portfolio information, the machine learning and everything is used. And the critical is that these events are generated and processed in real time. And an interesting feature of this whole field is why does astronomy have big data? Because actually the telescopes 
are not a great deal bigger than they used to be. What's happened is the cameras are much better than they used to be. So you get more, many more pixels than you used to do. Because the size of telescope is, is limited by atmospheric and uh, physical construction principles. This describes the um, classification of this application. It has the basic parallelism over celestial objects. It runs the filters, which are the machine learning for um, further study and generates events. Events themselves are parallel because there are a lot of events. And uh, so you have, but that can, of course, a much smaller number of events than original objects. So this is a good example of a streaming application. The data is clearly being generated in real time. And it's critical to have a classification because you want to actually identify interesting events, which means you must classify all the cases where things are changing. Here's a further, we have next two use cases add to this case here. Uh, then this one here it notes that we can effectively take these uh, types of data we're discussing and integrate it with simulation. We do, we can actually do that in all fields. And in fact, there are many use cases in different fields uh, which uh, do this integration, and then the simulation is typically run on a high performance computer, uh, but the data analysis is usually appropriate for a cloud. So this uh, extreme data um, application discusses various future astronomical uh, instruments. There is the dark energy survey that's covered in the next use case. There's the wiki transient factory, which is a petabyte per year. That's actually implemented on the old Mount Panama telescope uh, in California. The LSST we've already discussed, which is um, seven petabytes a year coming. And this, this is more optimistic than the previous early 2020. So let's say it's seven petabytes a year whenever it happens. And the simulations already they think will be 10 petabytes of output from the simulations in 2017 from maybe 200 million hours of supercomputer time. Notice this little picture of the LSST. It's a, got a 3.2 gigapixel camera and a picture taken every 20 seconds. So that's a lot of pixels on this one camera. I told you, telescopes have changed due to the cameras, not so much due to the uh, telescope sizes. Here we have the dark energy survey. Here the data comes from um, telescope in Chile. And then it goes from uh, Chile to uh, NCSA and also to uh, Lawrence Berkeley Lab for uh, storage and also for processing. And the, the galaxies and stars and the various images and surveys which compare images are, in their, are cataloged and their properties are measured and stored in a database. And again, this is using, uh, looking for transients through machine learning algorithms which identify particular changes and map them into transients. It uses, um, this one is still using Oracle databases, large memory machines, uh, GPFS, the standard HPC, uh, one of the standard HPC file systems. This also is using Python type wrappers, as I mentioned, are very common. They need in their machine learning, large scale Chalusky decomposition techniques. Um, with, which had correspond to matrices of a million elements on a side, and they would need to also be able to store images in parallel. The LSST will be particularly challenging in this regard. And here's an example of the uh, dark energy survey uh, in Chile with this new, uh, with a, yet again, a new camera being installed. <coughs> 